Welcome back. We're here at the New London Historical Society, and joining me now is Sandy Schmidt. Sandy's on the board here, and she's also one of the docents. She's going to tell us about four important figures in New London history. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So we've got we've got quite an array of personalities we're going to meet as we travel through time with you today. We do. And <laughs> if you think about your family, mm -hmm. there's always past or present. There's always some that are kind of outstanding. Mm -hmm. People that, for whatever reason, seem to take a normal 24-hour and make it bigger, right. make a lifetime bigger. Yes. So there are those same people in town. Yes. We continue to have them. But I'm going to tell you about four through the history of New London. OK. And their names are Anna Littlefield, mm -hmm. and Maude Swift, and Lloyd Littlefield, and Bud Lawrenson. Yes. So let's start with Anna. OK. She was born in 1859, mm -hmm. and she was born on a rural farm, farm nearby, and so she liked to go out in the field and check out wildflowers, and it, later in life became an expert botanist. Mm -hmm. She also grew to love flowers and painting, mm -hmm. which she did during her life. Um, she liked flowers so much, she was the first person to start the New London Garden Club. Oh. Oh. in uh, 1928 mm -hmm. and in fact will be honored this year for the Garden Club's 50th antique show anniversary. Nice. But she um, taught school in one room schoolhouse and um, even taught art at Colby Academy mm -hmm. back then until her art building burned down oh. and she in 1892 at which point she said, Providence told me, gave me a message that I should go and be a doctor, which I've always wanted to do. Wow. So she went to Dartmouth and they said, huh, no, sorry, you're a woman. So she ended up in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. became a doctor, came back to um, here and taught or was a medical doctor for 50 years oh, here wow. in New London. She, um, was a very small woman, mm -hmm. only five feet tall, but mm -hmm. very determined. Mm -hmm. For instance, it was nothing for her to hitch up her horse and buggy, go out on house calls, um, or strap on her snowshoes and go tromping through the waist-high snow. Mm -hmm. A remarkable woman. Yes. And we especially like her because of her um, enthusiasm for New London mm -hmm. and um, that kind of thing. But the next, oh, I should put this on. This was not her first, not her first career, but it was her longest career. I'm gonna pull it yeah. away from your mic. <laughs> That's, yeah. Okay, but the next person on our list of very important mm -hmm. um, New London people, especially to the Historic Society, was a lady that was born in 1883 and her name was Maud Swift. Now Maud Swift also graduated from Colby Academy in 1902 and she went off to Boston to the theater. <laughs> and she was well known for being um, her singing. She was in The Merry Widow and very famous for that. Mm -hmm. She traveled to all over Canada, all over New England. She traveled in New York, um, went out to California in the theater. And one of the times she was in Boston on a blind date, she met a MIT student named Herbert Swift. Uh -huh. Well, don't you know they fell in love, were married for over 50 years, lived in Detroit and New York and Massachusetts, ended up in Elkins, which is part of New London, mm -hmm. and they were married for over 50 years and had a lot of houses in Elkins. Both she and Herbert were very busy doing all kinds of things. She was really um, involved with the Tracy Library later, she, as was Herbert. She was very involved with rescuing and caring for animals. In fact, one of her Elkins houses became sort of a cat and dog sanctuary, where that's oh, nice. where they stayed mm -hmm. while she was in another house. Oh. So she's very well known for that. She was also known for um, interest in lineage kind of things, like the DAR mm -hmm. and the Magna Carta Dames. Never even heard of that one. Um, so she was involved with a lot of things around town. But 
one of the most important things for us at the Historic Society was her, one of her Elkins houses was moved wall by wall and donated to be the first building in the New London Historical Society Village. Mm -hmm. That is our present Sayville House, mm -hmm. which is reconstructed like a 1850s um, typical house. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. You have to come see it sometime. So we're particularly happy about her for those kinds of things. Um, well, let's move on. Our next, Got it. next mm -hmm. person was named Lloyd Littlefield. And if the name sounds familiar, it's because his great aunt was Dr. Anna Littlefield. Mm -hmm. He was involved um, in lots of things. He did his education in Tennessee. He got his uh, bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD in sciences, which he taught. He also had a lot of different jobs around town including town moderator or working with the boys club, working with the um, outing club, uh, working with, um, what else? oh, the Baptist church was another one of his. He is very well known, but one of the other things he was interested in was local history. Mm -hmm. He kind of had his own museum even in his house mm -hmm. and especially keeping track of Dr. Anna Field, nice. Anna's little field stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was what he was uh, known for. And finally, on our list, we have wherever the Bud Lawrenson, <laughs> who was born in 1929 and um, went to school in Connecticut, but he ended up living 60 years here in New London. Wow. He got a Bachelor's of Fine Art from Yale, um, and later in life actually was known as an expert um, painter, particularly of still life kind of things. A number of his paintings circulated and were sold and um, famous around New England. He's very famous. And even further mm -hmm. beyond that. He was into everything. His jobs were very varied. Uh, everything from draftsmen to antique car restorers to ski instructors to uh, working with the boys clubs, working with um, town, the town uh, Baptist church, deacon. He was uh, a sign painter for many years. He had an antique shop for 25 years. But the thing that we particularly appreciate at the Historic Society was the fact that for 49 years he was very active with the society. And um, he was one of the people that got the whole idea of having this village started. But that wasn't enough for him because he's one of the people who helped move buildings here. Mm -hmm. He helped build buildings here. He helped raise money for building he things did it here. All. Mm -hmm. He did it all. Um, he was the first one to restore the Concord Coach paintings, mm -hmm. for instance. And um, so we truly appreciate his contributions, which continue. In fact, he will be honored at a September event that's coming up at the Society and the Village. So that's kind of our brief invitation and introduction to four really important people. If you want to know more about them, you can go to the New London archives, town archives. You can also go to the New London Historical Society website mm -hmm. uh, to find out all the programs and activities we have going. And even better would be to come over to visit. That's the best. That's mm -hmm. the best. <laughs> um, on Sundays from 1 to 4, we're always open, or you can book your own tour another time. Uh, and this year, for the first time, we have a new thing, which is Wi-Fi video tablet tours, yes. as, which you can access when you get here. Mm -hmm. So we invite you to come in and um, find out more about these interesting new London people. Thanks so much for giving us a brief intro. Yeah, Very good. Welcome. Best wishes. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah. So many museums to see this summer. 
the Warner Indian Museum is just one of them. Stay tuned next to catch a glimpse at some of the activities they have in store for visitors this summer.